What's up everybody? It's me, Crosspatch. I am back here once again at the Pittsburgh Steelers practice facility, and the subject of today's video is Madden 21 Passing Tips for Beginners. This is part of my Madden for Beginners series. There'll be many more videos to come, so if you are new to Madden or struggling with the game, please take a minute to subscribe to this channel, ring that bell for notifications so you know when a new video is coming out, and let's get started. We're going to go without a defense today, hopefully for the sake of clarity. And the first thing we're going to talk about is something that's super simple, but even advanced players kind of forget from time to time. And that is, when you throw the football, do so with your quarterback's feet set as much as possible. So Roethlisberger drops back here. He's standing tall in the pocket. That's how I want him throwing the football. With his feet set. You have the best chance of being accurate if you can throw the ball with your feet set. Now that's not to say you can't be accurate doing other things, and that's not to say you'll always be accurate if you have your feet set. But it gives you your best chance of being accurate. What happens sometimes is people start fidgeting around here. They're doing this. Who's open? Where's the pass rush coming from? Who do I throw the ball to? And, uh... Like I said, it really does make a difference. It, uh, it makes a difference sometimes between a complete pass and an incomplete pass. So get out of that habit. Along those lines, another thing you're going to want to pay attention to, stay in the pocket. You've got five guys here trying to protect you. Uh, where Roethlisberger is right now is where I want him to throw the ball from. Um, if you go outside the pocket, if you drop back further, you're making your lo the life of your offensive lineman a lot harder. So these guys are trying to protect you. If I drop back like this, like a lot of guys, you're trying to get away from the pass rush, right? But um, I'll have Roethlisberger play the role of defensive end here a little bit. If your pass rushers are coming upfield, you've got number 76, your offensive tackle, trying to push them to the outside. That's what he's trying to do. So by dropping back here, you're actually dropping back right into the path of where those uh, edge rushers are going to be coming, if your offensive tackles do their job. Um, if anything, you want to step up in the pocket like this. Once again, set your feet, throw the ball. What was that for me, Rune? Um, and again, it's easy to do, right? Because you're panicking a little bit. It's natural. The, uh, the defense is coming at you. Uh, the pass rush is coming at you. Um... It's easy to panic. So what do we do to avoid panicking? To avoid thinking, uh, I don't know what I'm doing with the ball. Here comes the pass rush. i got to get rid of it. I'm just going to mash down any old button and get rid of it. I talked about it a little bit in my last video. The best thing you can do is spend time in practice mode and learn your plays. Whatever playbook you like to use, learn those plays. And get a sense of where you're going with the football. And as a new player, this is going to take time. Like, there's no substitute for just repetition on things in this game. Um, but then you know, I'm going to this guy or this guy or this guy. Like, you're going through your progressions. And it's going to take practice. It's going to take time until you can get there. I like to have a window of three seconds where I'm either getting rid of the ball or know what I'm doing with the ball. So, and that comes down to knowing the plays I'm running, being able to understand the coverages, um... This play, for example, Smith Schuster is the guy I want on this play running the deep post. Whether or not I can throw him to him depends on what defense, what the defense is doing, and uh, whether or not I think about throwing to him depends on what I see them line up in pre-snap or what I see them do post-snap. So within three seconds, I'm going to know whether or not I'm going to him. I'm going to go one thousand one. 2002, nope, and get rid of somebody else who's hopefully open. If Ibram's not open, I've got the halfback running the crosser in the other direction. So again, a little bit higher level for a beginner to be thinking about, but it's something to start working towards. Learn your plays, understand what your receivers are doing, and that'll take away a lot of that nervousness, a lot of that panic of thinking, oh no, the pass rush is coming, i got to get rid of the ball, what do I do with it? Um, you'll know what you're going to do with it. And again, plays break down anyway. You're going to be running for your life on occasion anyway. 
but it really get, puts the ball in your court a little bit more, gives you a much more chance of success uh, throwing the football. Uh, times when you're going to be running around behind here. Like, again, I don't want to run outside the pocket over here. I don't want to do this. Um, if I'm a defensive end here, trying to get past number 76, and I see Roethlisberger run outside the pocket, my life just got a lot easier because I just come straight at him, right? I don't have to get past number 76 anymore. And 76 doesn't know where you went. So he's not protecting you anymore. Uh, running quarterbacks are like a nightmare for offensive linemen sometimes because they don't know where they are. Um, stay in the pocket, but if you must escape the pocket... Um, let's reset this play. <clears throat> Try to scramble in the... If you can, I mean, sometimes the defense d uh, dictates what you're doing, but take a look at this play art. I've got Smith-Schuster, Johnson... Claypool and Samuels all running routes from left to right. I've only got one guy running from right to left. So if I have to escape the pocket because uh, everything goes haywire, I want to do so going in this direction because that's where all my receivers are going, right? And they're kind of running around like crazy now, but that's initially where they're going. And again, as I'm rolling, keep my eyes downfield and stop and throw if I can. Uh, you know, depending on where the defense is, you might not be able to do that if you got somebody, you know, right on your tail there. But again, you'll be more accurate if you're scrambling and you can take a second to stop and throw. So pressure is one reason, obviously, you're going to run around outside the pocket. Uh, the, the other obvious reason is plan plays. Waggles, bootlegs, sprint outs. Things like that where the quarterback is intended to run outside the pocket. But with those plays, your linemen know where you're going. They, uh, you know, they account for you being outside the pocket. So that's a little different. The third thing I'll say, and just because uh, you know, you're probably going to see it if you spend a lot of time watching, um, watching high-level players, especially head-to-head -head players um, online, uh... Again, Smith Schuster's running a post on this, and I sort of mentioned that if I don't see the coverage I like, I'm not throwing it to him. So if I were to see, like, if I think I have a cover three when I come up and do my post snap read, if I say, this looks like a cover three, I'm not throwing that to Smith Schuster because, again, I'm trying to get rid of the ball in three seconds. More advanced players, or players who, you know, just have a different philosophy, if they see a cover three, they may still be thinking, this is a touchdown. Because what they might be hoping is that the deep third defensive back uh, on Claypool's side is going to get pulled down when he runs that deep out. And all Smith Schuster has to do is get past the, the safety in the middle of the field and he's wide open. right? But that's not going to happen in three seconds. That's something that you need time for. And you're probably not going to be able to stand in the pocket while that is developing. So what you'll see a lot of advanced players do is just buy some time running around over here. Smith Schuster gets past that safety. Roethlisberger doesn't quite have the arm to make these kind of throws. And I'm only mentioning this in case you see it. You know, if you're seeing guys running around outside the pocket and you're thinking, hey, this is what I need to be doing, that might be why they're doing it. So always ask yourself why somebody's doing what they're doing. Um, as a beginner... Stay in the pocket, throw the ball with your feet set, I think are your best options. And, you know, move on from there. You'll get better as you go. Practice, practice, practice. Put in the time in practice mode and, uh, you know, do the reps and you'll get better. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so moving on. Types of passes you can throw. And this is, remember this video is for beginners. Uh, so this is something, you know, uh, you know, maybe... Uh, just remember that. This is intended for uh, newbies, people who uh, are just learning the game. Uh, bullet passes, touch passes, and lob passes are the three main types of passes you're going to throw in this game. So bullet pass, I'm going to throw one to uh, Johnson here. He's this triangle. I'm just going to press down on the triangle and hold it down and fire in a bullet pass to him. <clears throat> a lob pass. I'm going to throw one to Smith Schuster here. A quick press of the button. 
lobs it up in there too. <coughs> Excuse me. And a touch pass is kind of in between here, and this is one that I don't always get right, and I honestly don't throw them very often. So you're going to give a quick press of the button and a release. Oh, that was still a bullet pass. Let's try again. There's a touch pass. So a little bit similar to a lob. You can think of a bullet pass as using it when you want to fire it in there, when you've got a small window, um, shorter routes, routes where um, maybe man coverage where the guy doesn't uh, have a lot of room, uh, the defender's right up on him, you want to fire that ball in there, you want it in the air as little as possible. Uh, lob passes, as you can see, they're good for throwing deep. Uh, they might be good if you have to get the ball over a defender's head, uh, things like that. And again, try just spend time in practice mode with these things. Um, a touch pass, again, uh, you know, if you have someone running a little corner route, you just want to finesse the ball in there to them, that's when you'd use a touch pass. So experiment with these three different kinds of passes, even if you go in without a defense like I'm doing here. And just mess around with them and get used to throwing them. They all have their uses. Um, I throw bullet passes more than anything, probably. I'll take a look at Smith Schuster here, right? Um, when he runs this route, depending on what the defense is doing and who that cornerback is and who the safety is, I might throw him a bullet pass or I might throw him a lob pass. So if I'm going to throw him a bullet pass, that's what it's going to look like. And, uh, excuse me, you know, like I said, spend time in practice, get used to it. The other things you can do is put the ball high or low with the uh, L1 or L2. Um, and you can think of the practical uses for that. you got a tall receiver going against a smaller defensive back. I'm going to have Smith Schuster, uh, I'm going to have Claypool run a slant here. I've got a six foot four Chase Claypool. Um, if he's going to run across the middle against a smaller defensive back, I'm going to put it up high so that he has a better chance of coming down with that ball. <clears throat> you got those six foot eight tight ends, six foot seven tight ends. Perfect chance to use the high pass L1. And uh, you know, putting it down low gives you a little bit less chance of an interception. Um, not always, but you know, again, use your judgment, mess with it in practice mode. I like to throw, uh, when I throw slants, I like to put it low, um, comeback routes, uh, anything where I'm worried of that the ball floating a little bit is going to end up in an interception or get knocked away. So, um, you know, uh, you also may want to put it low if you're uh, worried about the uh, receiver getting hit when he catches the ball. Experiment with those things in practice mode, and you'll kind of get a little better at them and get a little bit used to uh, when to use each one. Can lead the receiver. All I have to do to do that, if I'm going to lead Johnson, is left on the, on the left stick, <clears throat> or in the direction he's running, uh, as he's running his route. So he's running a dig route from left to right, I'm going to press, uh, I'm sorry, right on the left stick. And see, I led him a little bit too much there. That's no good. And I also didn't have my feet set. There we go. So again, if you got a receiver in tight coverage, you might want to lead him a little bit. Um, you know, put it in front of him. You can do some different things as far as putting balls behind guys and things like that too. But we'll stick with just leading him for now. And the other thing to think about here... <coughs> excuse me, is uh, it's okay to throw the ball away. So remember, there's a rule between these two tackles here. That's called the tackle box. You have to be outside the tackle box to throw the ball away and not get a penalty. So i got to be outside of number 76 here. And then that's just a click down on the right stick. 
So if you're scrambling, you don't know what to do with the, with the ball, it's second down, get rid of it, learn to fight another day. No reason not to do that. It's a good way to avoid throwing interceptions. And while we're talking about th avoiding throwing interceptions, um, I was going to get into this a little bit in this video, but I don't want it to be too long. I did a separate video about how to stop throwing interceptions. And I'm going to put that in the link in the cards at the end of the video. So you can go ahead and check it out. Um, <clears throat> just some basic things you can do to always have something to do with the ball and not just put it up and, and hope for the best. Um, having another option besides who you think you want to throw the ball to is big. And this play, Ibram and John, or I'm sorry, Ibram and Samuels are my other options. But, uh, you know, there's things you can do even if you don't have these drags or these short routes uh, to hot route guys so they always have a second option. So watch that video. I will, I will uh, link to it in the card uh, at the end of this video. And uh, that does a better job of explaining it all than I would just in a couple of uh, minutes here. Um... And once again, I want to reiterate something I talked about in my first video in this series. If you're struggling with all of this that we're talking about, if you're feeling frustrated, ask yourself, are you playing on the right skill level, right? Knock it down to skill level if you really feel like you're butting your head against the, uh, against the wall and things aren't going well. Um, it doesn't help you to continuously fail. Play on a level that you're finding success and build up from there. Uh, again, all Madden is extremely unforgiving, especially in passing. Um, so don't be afraid. If you got to play on rookie, there's nothing wrong with that. If you have to play on pro, there's nothing wrong with that. Get your skills together. As you, as you get better at the game, you'll be able to move up in skill level. And if, to sort of uh, punctuate this video, we're going to go over something else. We're going to get out of practice mode, and we're going to talk a little bit about quarterback ratings and how they affect everything we just went over. <clears throat> so, I was going to just look at the Steelers here, but I think it would be more useful to look at the entire NFL. So, back in days of yore, like Madden 05, 06, 07, around there. You basically had throwing power and throwing accuracy for quarterback ratings. Two things. And of course you had awareness and you had speed and you had agility and you know tangentially related things like that. But when it came to actually throwing the ball, that's all you had. And actually, if you wanted to, uh, you know, if you played franchise, there was... Uh, there were drills that you could do in preseason, and it was super easy, well not super easy, but fairly easy, uh, to get a quarterback up to 99 throwing powder, power, 99 throwing accuracy, 99 overall, and uh, you know, once he started to regress when he got older, put him back into those drills and keep him there. 99 throwing power, 99 throwing accuracy. And uh, those days are gone, and that is kind of good. As much as people, you know, kind of uh, have issues with the modern game compared to back then, we now have a whole bunch of different things that separate quarterbacks, make them different from each other, uh, make them unique or at least part of very small subsets of types of quarterbacks. And uh, we can see all of these here, right? And uh, a good way to, I think, illustrate that, we'll take a look at Russell Wilson and Tom Brady. Okay? Both are 95 overall. Which I thought Russell Wilson went up to a 99 or something like that, but maybe not. I don't know. So, you know, we'll ignore things like awareness and all that stuff and speed. But we'll take a look at throwing power, okay? So they're fairly closely related. 92 and 90. So when it comes to just heaving the ball downfield, these two guys are pretty similar. So what you can do with one, you can do with the other in that, in that concept. Short throw accuracy. Um, medium throw accuracy, deep throw accuracy, again, fairly similar. Uh, Brady has a higher rating, but Wilson has a pretty darn good rating too, 94, 94, 91. Throw on the run is where things get a little different. 
Brady has an 84, which I think is a little high in my opinion, but uh, Wilson has a 96. So everything we were talking about before would plant your feet before you throw, especially or if even if you happen to be scrambling out of the pocket. That's a little less true with Russell Wilson, right? Because he's got a 96 throw on the run rating. So that means he's, you know, clearly better at throwing on the run. Brady has an 84. Um, okay, I guess, not great. But you're going to want to stop and plant your feet with him. Throw under pressure. This is the one where I kind of feel like the opposite is kind of weird with the ratings here. But um, Wilson has a 94. Brady has an 86. I would think Brady should be higher, but whatever. Um, a little less prone to pressure. A little less likely to throw incomplete passes uh, because there are blitzers coming at him than uh, Tom Brady. So, you know, these quarterbacks are similar in some ways and different in other ways, right? So how you use them is going to depend on these ratings. Break sack, Russell Wilson, 94. Tom Brady, 61. Tom, Russell Wilson has much more of an opportunity to create plays than Tom Brady does. Something to think about when you're calling plays with him, when you're uh, deciding what to do when the pressure starts coming in on him. Uh, play action. Both of these guys are fairly high, related, high uh, rated. So I'd say they played probably pretty similar. But, you know, they're both pretty good at play action. But look down here at somebody like Deshaun Watson, who has an 83 play action. Um, Kyler Murray has 80. That seems surprising also, but... So, you know, calling a play-action pass with any of these guys, you're going to want to know these ratings. All of these things, all of these quarterback ratings affect how they play. And from your perspective, they're going to affect what you do with them. You're going to play... Uh, you, you're going to use Aaron Rodgers uh, differently than you're going to use Dak Prescott. Um, you're going to use Lamar Jackson a lot differently than you're going to use Tom Brady. There's a lot of variation in these guys. And taking the time to understand what all of these things mean and how they affect how your quarterback plays is real important. And I suggested starting a franchise in my last video to sort of... Um, to sort of become more at home with these ratings for whatever particular team you decide to use. And then you can therefore make your decisions based off of what you like or don't like about what you learned. Uh, but however you decide to do it, spend the time to learn what these ratings mean. Um, I sort of mentioned before about Roethlisberger doesn't have the arm strength to throw that kind of deep pass. Uh, so, you know, if you do want to play in that way, Flinging the ball downfield like that. Josh Allen maybe is your guy. Or Mahomes. Or I guess Baker Mayfield. Um, so all things to think about. And uh, I think we'll leave it at that for now. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, this was just supposed to be some very basic tips for beginners. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to help uh, if I can. Um... Go ahead and hit that like button if you would. Subscribe to the channel. Whatever you decide to do, I hope you have a great day. And I will see you next practice.